All right, let's go. You know, I, I think that you're probably going to have to wait a little bit on the ladder. We're, we're really down on our numbers. It's really difficult for us to play at the, the speed that we really want to. Nico, I love you a lot. You know, that stuff is all private, but I'll tell you what, that, that guy is in better shape than a lot of people have any clue. So uh, when he says that he's at home resting and, and he's going to whoop tail and be back here in a little bit, there's no doubt in my mind that's exactly what's going to happen. I'm not going to doubt him. Yeah, I appreciate it, Coach. Thanks. Thank you. Following up on that, Dino, um, there was another case on the basketball team apart from Jim. Um, just curious, have, has there been any positive cases within the football program since we last talked to you? You know, no, not at all. We've had, we tested 160 football players and staff uh, just the other day and all came back negative. So, and we've been, you know, we've been good for a real, real long time when it comes from the football end of it. So, uh, you know, it's, it's so rapid out there, it's increasing. It's unfortunate that that happened, but uh, we're right now in the football program, we've really been doing and we've really been blessed and we haven't had any of those issues. Good to hear, stay safe. Thanks, Danny. Uh, next one to Mark Larson from Spectrum. Good morning, Coach. Um, I hate to harp on it, but uh, how, how surprising is it when as careful as Syracuse has been, uh, when you hear that news uh, yesterday about basketball? You know, again, that's, I don't know what happened over there, but it's just, you know, I consider it a happening. We're part of the community. We're part of society. No matter how sharp and tight we want to keep things, every once in a while a hiccup does happen. But uh, I think if you look at the overall record, I think we'll compete with any university, anywhere, uh, when it comes to our football and basketball teams based off of what our records have been since they've been back on campus. You know, the, the biggest thing, uh, Stephen, is we're just trying to uh, increase the volume on his plate. You know, he was, in a, he was in a situation where, you know, we don't, we're not able to do everything that we're capable of doing. And, and then some of the other things that we would like to do has to, has to be based off of his experiences. I mean, you can talk about it, but until you be about it, it, it really doesn't matter. So it's, it's really, hey, we can do this, and we're like, ah. He's never seen that before, we, you know. Well, I'm sure he can handle this, and it's ah, uh, that's not so easy as you think it is when you start practicing it. So, I mean, there's no doubt there's limitations, but I thought uh, so far the stuff that we've been giving him, he's been doing okay. Just to follow up quickly, do you know if Rex will be available? You know, the good thing is that uh, you know he was back at practice uh, the last practice or two, so uh, it seems like he's getting better. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, as we head to uh, another game this week? 
You know, I've been, I, my players would probably say that I've perked up their ears too much uh, since they've been back on campus. I was talking about the do's and don'ts of Halloween the week before Halloween happened, and, and it seemed like Halloween was a bad situation for the entire United States, pre and post Halloween date, as you young people probably know. So, <laughs> so you know, uh, they hear from me. They've heard through me during the bye week that uh, the bye weeks are when uh, most teams, something happens, something goes down during the bye week, and it normally comes back to cost them when they come back into uh, their routine of play, and we've been, you know, in their ears that this is the time that you have to do your due diligence and cross your T's and dot your I's, and, and hopefully it works out. We're coming off our bye, and we've, we passed our first round of tests, and we've got two more rounds of tests before we get to game day, and, and hopefully uh, things will continue the way they have been in the program. And if I could follow up just real quick, uh, with Louisville still on Saturday, their dynamic quarterback will still be able to have a lot of success. Two of their other dynamic players, Tutu and, and Davian Renato, will play. But still, what do you see from, from Louisville, those guys, and, and how uh, dynamic that offense is? They're, they're explosive. They really are. They're, they're so explosive. I mean, for them to – have their, their top tail back down and Tutu who just runs by everybody, it doesn't matter what the other jerseys are. To have those guys down and still be able to put points up on the board, it's really, really impressive. And you got to take your hats off to Coach Scatterfield. I mean, Satterfield, I mean, he, my goodness, it's, it's an explosive offense. He's done a nice job with the personnel that he has. And, and they continue to find a way to score points. And, uh, you know, I'm really impressed with everything they've been able to do uh, for the two years that they've been there. Thank you. Next, we go to Dan Tortora. Coach, uh, just what you can say, you know, this being a fifth year and obviously a very uh, interesting year, different than anything you probably ever experienced as a coach, but five years at Syracuse wearing the S on your chest, just what that has meant to you, you know, leadership-wise for you, and, and what it means moving forward even in a season that's had some adversity on and off the field. You know, obviously based off of this fifth year, I would, you know, I'd like to have an asterisk by it, but I understand. I understand there's not going to be an asterisk. But uh, it's, it's, it's been different. There's no doubt that 2020 has been a different year and uh, something that you need to grow and learn from. And that's exactly the way I'm taking it. I want to be green and growing about this situation, everything that's going on with it, and not red and, ro not red and rotten. I want to make sure that I acquire the knowledge so I can uh, have the power from the experiences of this later on. The five years that I've been here, it's been a blessing. You know, Syracuse to me is a special place. It has special individuals when you get to meet uh, Jim Brown and Rod Conrad and Larry Zonka and all the icon guys from the past and, and hopefully an opportunity to meet uh, President-elect Biden in the future or even Vanessa Williams. You know, I always, always thought she was really cool with all the movies that I saw her do with Arnold and all that other kind of stuff. Always, there's some amazing people in the past here along with our announcers, Trico and, and everyone else that's been at this institution. And it's a very proud university and Hopefully, I've been leading it in the right way where they can be proud about some of the things that we've done. And hopefully, I can continue to do that in the future. Thank you, Coach. Mm -hmm. Thanks, man. Next, we'll go to Ante DeBondo from the Daily Orange. Hey, Dino. Hope you're doing well. The last two seasons, the offensive line has been at the bottom of the ACC in both run and pass protection. Uh, what do you equate that to at this point, seeing that there hasn't been much improvement? Is it injuries? Is it coaching? Is it the way I see it is there has been improvement. If you look at the first part of the season to the second part of the season, I think we've cut those numbers down by half. And we're on our, our, our third quarterback in those situations. So I think there has been improvement this season. When I think when you add up the overall numbers, it puts us at the bottom. We understand that. We had a really rough beginning. And uh, sometimes it's, over, it's hard to overcome huge numbers like that. But I would expect for it to get better and to continue to get better because obviously we all know that that's not uh, a high enough standard based off of where we're going to finish at and what we expect here at this university. Thanks, Adam. Anthony. Uh, next we'll go to John Kikis. Hey, Coach. Uh, the uh, ACC seems a little bit unbalanced uh, as far as records go. Is that just a reflection of this season and the COVID, or do you feel, feel like some teams are breaking away from the rest of the pack? 
you know, first of all, it was kind of hard to hear all your question. Your volume was really low, but I, I think what you're asking me is just what the standings look like based off, based off of all of us being in one conference right now. And I think a lot of it has to do with all the situations that you mentioned. Uh, there, uh, the injuries, the guys opting out uh, at unique times, uh, being able to play a team at full strength and then being able to play a team at half strength if they have some COVID or tracing issues. So there's the, the lineups are being juggled in and out. It's not a normal year and people are trying to, people are having to make adjustments and improvise on the run. And I just think it's going to be a very unique situation. And like I said, you put an asterisk by it, somebody's going to get a national championship and, and everything else. But after this season's over, hopefully things will get back to what they used to be and some, some type of normacy. Thanks, Coach. Mm -hmm. Next we go to Nate Mink. I actually wanted to follow up a little bit on that and, a, and an earlier question. Um, when you kind of assess where you're at right now, you know, one and seven, and you kind of take in this whole year in totality. Is this something that is sounding the alarm to you the way it did a year ago when you would consider sort of another major revision this offseason? It's not the same to me. I mean, I think there's so many uh, mishaps, injuries. Like I said, talked about the COVID situation. I think the one thing you always want to be, you, all you, you always want to be is fair. You have to be able to look at things and see if people really had a, a fair opportunity to show what they can or cannot do. And I just think this year is one of those years you put an asterisk by and, and you move on. Mm -hmm. Next we go to Josh St. Croix. Hi, Coach. Um, we got a chance to talk to Nolan Cooney before the bye week. Uh, just wondering if you could describe what he means to this team locker room-wise and um, on the field in terms of field position and with his performance overall. You know, it's interesting that you would bring him up. We had a, we probably, we've had some deep conversations through all this stuff, but had a nice little conversation with him in the hallway, both masked up uh, yesterday. Oh, was it Sunday? It was Sunday. And I guess that it was yesterday. And uh, just amazing to talk to him. He's such a mature guy and, you know, he's got some options on what he wants to do as far as the, uh, uh, playing in the National Football League at the next level or, or coming back here again. And, and we were just talking through some of those things. And he's such a mature guy. Uh, you know, you're definitely not talking to a young student. You're talking to a man that's, that knows exactly what he wants on, in life. And he's going to weigh the numbers and, and make an, in, an intelligent decision based off the facts. And uh, it's just a pleasure to talk to somebody like that where you know exactly where they're coming from. And when the numbers add up, you'll be able to look at it and says, you know what, that makes sense. I can understand why you did that. Or, yes, that makes sense. I understand why you're deciding to do this. So uh, he's, a, he's a fantastic guy, good leader. And I think it's been re we've been really lucky to have him back this year because I think he was a uh, calming effect, not only on the football field, but in the locker room as well. Thanks, Coach. Mm -hmm. Next we go to Will Shea. Hey, Dino. I wanted to ask about uh, recruiting in Canada, and I want to know what motivates your program to go there to search for new guys, and how do you think that's worked out so far? Well, first of all, I think it's worked out okay. But uh, the reason it all started back in uh, 1979, when I was a freshman at the University of Hawaii, and we started two-a-days, and my, uh, my late coach that passed away recently, Dick Tomey, was really big on mixing guys up uh, preferably different races, different positions, different sides of the ball, just to make sure that as freshmen you got to know all your family. And my first college roommate was a, an, a Canadian from British Columbia by the name of Jim Mills. And Jim was a six foot seven, blonde, blue eye, Canadian. I think he was somewhere around 235 when he got there, uh, tight end. And I saw him in all during camp, he was my roommate, and that was different, uh, definitely an experience. I had to learn what hey matey and, and all the Canadian terms were. But uh, the first thing I said to him, I said, the way you eat and the way you drink iced teas, there's no way you're going to stay an offensive lineman. 
I mean, you're going to stay a tight end. I said, you're going to end up being an offensive lineman. And sure enough, he, he grew into an offensive lineman. And if I'm not mistaken, I think he was rookie of the year. Uh, his, his first year in the National Football League for the uh, Baltimore Colts. That's how old, how old I am. But uh, he ended up being a really, really good uh, professional player, good college player. And I think he ended up and played a little while in the CFL as well. But uh, that was my first experience with them, knowing that they're good football players and also knowing that they take a little time when they come down to play American football. Because when he put on his pads the first time, I just looked at I looked at my roommate and I said, Jim, you have, you don't have your pads on correctly. And he says, What do you mean, matey? I said, That thing that's in the front, that goes in the back. <laughs> so turn that around so everybody doesn't laugh at you. But uh, ended up being a fabulous football player and a lot better football player than me. And I've been on the Canadian train ever since. Thanks, coach. Thank you. Next we'll go to Jacob Payne. Hey, coach. Have there been other seasons during your coaching career that you would have liked to have seen an asterisk next to? Or is 2020 the only one that you'd like to see have that monitor? Are you referring to as a, as a head coach or an assistant? Uh, either. Either one. Well, uh, as a head coach, I think we've had some decent seasons. Well, I've never had a season like this as a head coach. I've only been on one team that's only one uh, – a single game the entire year. It was at Purdue University when we were ch turning it around. Head coach was Jim Coletto. And uh, that was a very, very difficult year to only come away with one win. And uh, I would like to make sure I don't have to go through that again. I've got three opportunities against three teams where we will not be favored. I'm really sure about that. But uh, we'll see how the chips fall. Maybe we can pull one out here down the stretch. But uh, it's very, very difficult to go through seasons like this. But this is where you start to grow. As iron sharpens iron, one man sharpens another. And it's what you really find out what you're made of is during the tough times. It's easy to be on teams where you win all the time and your character is never challenged or there's never been, you know, you don't have to put a light on what you are on the inside. And I think that light's been shining bright here at Syracuse this year. And I think it's going to pay off for us down the road. Thank you. Mm hmm We've got time for two more. We'll start with Brad Klein. Hey, Coach, I want to circle back to Louisville for a second. You mentioned that Tudu Atwell is a really good player, but what kind of uh, unique challenges might he present for you this coming week? Well, you can't tackle him one-on-one. -on -one. He's, he's shifty, he's small, he's quick, and he's faster than everybody else. I mean, take, say every positive thing that you want to say about the young man. And then, you know, offensively, they use him in a way that really – puts the defense on edge. I mean, this guy is good. The quarterback is extremely good. Their defense, people don't, get, don't give them enough credit. They play difficult scheme on defense. And their special teams are electric. So uh, this is a highly, highly skilled football team. And 2-2 is probably, along with that quarterback and the tailback, is the three highest skilled players on that team. Thanks a lot. Good luck. Mm-hmm. Thanks, Brad. For the last question, we'll go to Adam Hilton from the Daily Orange. Hey, Coach. So the last few weeks, you know, we've seen Anthony Newton come along as a whiteout, um, you know, ever since we played that Liberty game. You know, what have you seen from him, and how can you assess his performance? I did not get the name that you said. Uh, Anthony. Anthony Quillen. Oh, my goodness. You know, Anthony has really come on. Uh, this is his first full-time uh, service, so to speak, as a starter, and he's been doing an amazing job. He's He's one of those guys that when you throw the ball to him, he normally catches it. He's got one of the best catch ratios on the football team. And, uh, you know, you just don't see him drop a lot of footballs, whether it's in practice or whether it's in the games. So uh, he's someone that you can really depend on, and he's extremely, extremely consistent. What can you, like, what did you see out of camp that led to him getting a, getting a higher usage this year and getting more, more catches compared to other guys? Well, the, the biggest thing is this. When you're a wide receiver, the number one thing you need to do is catch the ball. The number two thing you need to do is get open. If you can do those two things, you're probably going to be on the football field. Now, if you add the third thing, which, which Anthony does, is that he's extremely consistent. You know what you're going to get out of him. And based off of that, when guys are consistent, you can start game planning around them. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Thanks, Adam. That concludes today's press conference. Uh, media, just a reminder, we return to normal with players Tuesday night, which goes our two season, and if you have not by today, please. Thank you. Thank you.
Thanks, guys. Thanks.